We're going to show great heart. DACA is a very, very difficult subject for me because you have these incredible kids in many cases, not in all cases. In some of the cases, they're having DACA and they're gang members and they're drug dealers, too. They were brought here in such a way. It's a very, it's a very, very tough subject. We are going to deal with DACA with heart. I have to deal with a lot of politicians, don't forget. I find it very, very hard doing what the law says exactly to do. President Trump signaling an openness when it comes to his predecessor's deferred action program for certain undocumented or illegal immigrants who entered the country's children uh, with their parents. Trump seemingly softening his uh, campaign sort of hardline stance with respect to this part of immigration, even suggesting that he would be willing to work with Congress to protect the so-called dreamers. Here to discuss Enrique Arbelez, Elvira Salazar, and Jeremy Ring. Uh, Elvira, you know, uh, you could see the president was torn. Uh, he, he did remind us in a, not, in a pretty subtle way that, that what the law is. Uh, but he also hinted or suggested that perhaps he'd be willing to, to be softer than he talked about on the campaign trail. Absolutely. He showed he had a heart because this is the most gut-wrenching decision he would have to be facing when it comes to immigration. We're talking about 700,000 children between the ages of 16 and 30 years old that have not committed any crimes. The only crime was committed by their parents when they were carried over the border. Some of these kids don't even speak Spanish. If you send them back to their countries of origins, you're going to be sending them back to the wolves. And President Trump knows that. They are the ideal immigrant because they assimilated already. They love America. They speak English. They are more Americans than you and me. So sending them back Absolutely. It's horrible. It has to be a horrible decision for the president. And yet, Jeremy, uh, you know, if, if that's the if you leave that loophole out there, then it's a, a pretty easy way to continue making this illegal immigration a, a problem if you don't close that particular loophole. No, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I'm not sure uh, I believe in that in that premise. I mean, these are kids that were educated here. We've spent money educating them. We want them as part of our society. I mean, I'm glad that President Trump seems to uh, be softening his stance. But even even when he said at the end, but there's some of them become gang members. I mean, if they're gang members, we should get rid of them. And I, I but there's no evidence that that's widespread either. Well, en right. Enrique, I mean, we did see last week a highly publicized instance where uh, someone was returned uh, who, who hadn't committed any crime since coming to the country as it would have qualified on the DACA, but was affiliated with gangs. We don't know how deep that goes. It could be a major issue. But overall, your sense on where President Trump is going on this? Look, it's good to see some empathy from the president. We're going to see where the actions follow after this, right? And look, you can, you can find a Joe Doe story for any type of case and try to, you know, generalize it. But for the most part, I've met many of these individuals, and they, this is home for them. How do you define home? Is it where you grow up? Is it where the heart is? Is it where family and friends are? This is home. This is the country they love and know, and the only country they know and love. And uh, they so want to be productive the, members of society. So what about then the, the idea, though, is if you keep certain loopholes, then you never stop illegal immigration, that, that you, you have the, you know, the, the instance of people saying, hey, if I could just drag a kid along or get into the country and have a child, is that fair to people who live in this country already? So. DACA is not retroactive. DACA is, for a, you know, for a specific period of time. So it's not, it doesn't mean that it's ever rolling for new people coming in, first, of, first and foremost. And the second thing is, do we want the people here to be productive members of society and be able to contribute to taxes and to the wealth of the economy? Or do we want to stifle what is going to be the future of America as well? You're talking about a significant amount of people that can contribute intellectually in the academia and professionally as well to the country. You know, last night there, yeah, uh, but, uh, go ahead, uh, Elvira. What I want to say is that at the same time, I think if President, I'm sure that President Trump is going to find a happy medium and he's going to be able to uh, satisfy his base and the promise that he made to that base that illegal immigration was going to be stopped. But at the same time, he's going to find a way to leave these kids in the country. You know why? Because 30 percent of the Hispanics that voted for President Trump uh, will be extremely upset if something happens to these children. There is a, a, an immense sympathy well, listen, and solidarity. Well, listen, listen, we, we know we always, President, candidate what? Trump said on a campaign trail, and he won a, a pretty significant amount of the Latino vote. I do want to ask you something specifically, because last night President Trump put out a tweet uh, about political prisoner uh, in, yeah. in Venezuela, uh, Le, uh, Leopardo Lopez, Lopez, right? Yeah, a political yes. prisoner, husband. Uh, and he had his wife there. Marco Rubio was in the White House. 
Uh, you know, you know him very well. You went to college oh, I, with him. Yeah, I went to I went to the uh, John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard. I know him very well, and he is the he's the poster child of Venezuelan opposition movement. This guy is giving his life. He's rotten in a military jail for the simple reason or or sin of wanting to bring uh, democracy back to his country. Trump did very well. You see, there is Marcos Rubio right there. There was the vice president, because he is sending a message for the first time in 50 years to the Venezuelan opposition that they are not alone and that's, that the United States is going to do something for them. Remember yeah. that Chavez was in yeah. love with Fidel Castro. He imposed the Cuban economic model on Venezuela, and that is why the, the Venezuelan economy is teetering on the verge of collapse. Yeah, all that they oil, have 800... All, yeah, all all that oil uh, wealth, and, you know, they're, now they're killing uh, it's like <laughs> swans uh, for food. Thank you all very much. Really appreciate it. <clears throat> hey, hey, to Dow. Well.